Hello everyone, N3FJZ here. Uh, making this video primarily for Bill, W3WEG, who's a member of our Morning Net. Uh, he was discussing uh, using a diode as a variable capacitor. And I just want to show him a circuit I built several years ago uh, for my early rigs. And this is a uh, analog uh, VFO circuit. And then in it, I use a uh, just a uh, general variety 1N4007 rectifier diode um, for a Veractor diode. Uh, now, of course, you can get Veractor di diodes that are specifically designed for RF work. Uh, they're usually needed if you need exceptional temperature stability or a greater range or other host of uh, reasons to use a purposely designed diode as a Veractor for that purpose, but if you're just doing amateur radio experimentation, you can get by with one of these uh, general purpose rectifier diodes. Now, the smaller switching diodes like the uh, 1N4148s and 914s uh, are not as good, uh, I think because the junctions are so much smaller internally, but the idea here is that uh, for rectifier diodes they're a little bit greater um, structurally uh, the size is a little greater internally, which gives you a better uh, range of capacitance. Uh, you could do a search on the, on the net and it, they can explain it better than I can. But here in this circuit, as you can see, um, there is a, uh, you, you build your oscillator like you normally would, and then where a capacitor would go for tuning, uh, you'd use a blocking capacitor. Here I use 10 picofarads, and then of course the diode where the anode is grounded, and the cathode is connected to the uh, to the blocking capacitor. Now you see there's a wire coming off the junction of the anode and the capacitor here, and that goes down to a um, a potentiometer. And uh, you would connect the pen potentiometer to ground, and of course the uh, other side of the potentiometer will go to a uh, DC source. Here I have a 100 ohm resistor feeding uh, from the uh, power supply of the main oscillator, and then of course I have a diode for filtering. Uh, ideally you could use a 10-turn turn potentiometer for more uh, exacting uh, adjustments. Here I just use a single-turn potentiometer because I have this circuit uh, padded down to the point where the capacitive change for complete turn of the potentiometer is uh, very small in relation to the main tuning capacitor. And then here you can see where the two main tuning capac well, in my particular circuit I only have one, and of course they then go up to the oscillator where they normally would through another capacitor just to uh, give me the correct range. Okay, so there's the uh, oscillator circuit as it's drawn, as I drew it. And of course down here we have the actual circuit in its physical form. In this case I think I just grab two junk diodes that I had. I knew they were from a power supply. I'm not sure exactly what these are. It's not important. Uh, but they could be a 1N4007s, 1N4001s, whatever. Or actual a Veractor diode if you have one. In this case, um, as, uh, as it would be shown in the schematic, the, uh, the, the anode and you can't see it in here in this particular view, but it's it's connected to ground, and of course the uh, the uh, well, I'm sure, yeah the I have them back. Okay, these in this case I have them back to back. This give me a little. This would give me a little bit more range uh, for the uh, tuning. You could see where the diode is uh, connected to the main tuning capacitor through two blocking capacitors and you can choose these based on your range or what capacitance range you desire and you'll see there's a 100k resistor right here and that green wire goes to the wiper of the um, of the tuning capacitor or the uh, potentiometer the black wire is ground the red wire goes to the DC power supply through appropriate filtering and maybe some other another resistor just to limit the current And there's the circuit tuning capacitor. Okay, uh, here's the output of that circuit. 
and uh, here I'm turning the physical air variable capacitor. You can see the range is quite large and I'm going from something like 9 megahertz all the way down to 2 which is quite wide for a VFO in this case and uh, it's, I've modified this circuit to give me this range when it was actually in my rig it was much the, the swing was much smaller but for this demonstration I'm going to I have and I have my uh, SSB rig turned to 72 tuned to 7260 so just to show you how you could use where would you know when you would use this in a practical design is when you have you want to you want to provide some form of fine tuning here I'll turn the rig up so you can hear the beat zero beat once I get to it 7260 and as you could tell it was very touchy to get it there okay and now you can hear them close and of course the variation you hear is I'm just getting my hand close to the circuit. You can see how touchy this is. You would normally shield this. Okay, now I'm going to turn the uh, the potentiometer. You can see there's a much finer range, and you can get very close to 7260, and I can put it right on the spot, more or less. So, and that's how I use it. course the um, the air variable is much very touchy to get it and that's how you would use it okay here's the output again the frequency and 